Hello out there. There's been uh, some uh, questions about what's, what's going on with this sawmill. This is the Ferrano circular saw and developments are being made. Progress is going along all right. If um, there's a couple things, obviously it's, uh, it's, I now have a big frame structure for it. There are 20 posts, hydro poles in the ground that are sunk about four feet in the ground each. And there are crossers of six by six ash on top of everything uh, for a kind of a supporting structure. There are three crossers that will go under the husk of the mill. And those I've prepared by drilling holes in them so that the through bolts have somewhere to sit. The little heads have somewhere to sit, kind of nest in these. And uh, the biggest next part will be alignment, of course, and the rails. So I've always had a shortage of cast iron rail sections. These are the guide sections. I had three originals, about four feet long. And if it was 90 degree angle iron, I could have just fabricated it up. Uh, there's lots of other ways around this. I could have used 90 degree angle iron and just returned the wheels, but I wanted to stick it to original. So I took the three original rail sections to the local foundry and they very nicely cast me up a whole bunch more, I believe 12 more. So this is a funny angle, something like 63 degrees. And so that was kind of the reason why I went this way, as well as I wanted to support the little old local foundry. And um, the originals were cast. So I'm really glad to stick to the originals. The benefit of these ones is that they're, they were cast in malleable iron. So they should be less crack um, prone to the originals compared to the originals. I went ahead and drilled and countersunk all the holes in the exact same manner that the originals were done. Here's an existing rail. See the hole pattern. I assume they're staggered in the center to uh, reduce the likelihood of a crack. So you had two, 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 two. And our length is on this one, 36 and eight and a half. So that there, grab a new one. And the length here is uh, a little bit over an eight. So that would be pretty reasonable in the realm of an eighth of an inch to the foot shrinkage. So our uh, new length on this guy half inch shorter is 44 inches so that's a very nice convenient number because i can take this measuring stick and a wax pencil and mark out where the holes will go so the first set is an inch in just eyeball that and then flip that around i will have the first set at 11 then 22 then 33 and then another inch in. I'm really going to just eyeball it about halfway between the edge and where the rail starts. And I'll be biased a little bit to the edge because if I go too close to the rail, then my countersink bit will rub against the angle face before it gets to full depth. Now, uh, you might be thinking, oh, don't hit that too hard, it's cast iron, but this, this malleable stuff is really supposed to be quite forgiving. So I will, uh, I'll treat it as such and we'll see how that works. Old barns over there, ready for some action. this old club tin just to collect chips.
Got my seams really nicely. Now these drilling and uh, countersinking operations are all by eye and to be honest I believe that's how the original rails were done. If you look at them and measure them the holes are maybe within an inch of each other for consistency but they vary all over the place and the countersink depths as well all over the place so that's perfect for me it doesn't really matter where the screws go anyway they're just holding the rail to a beam. This is a countersink, so it does a nice job, but it doesn't do it fast. You just need some patience. Grab the screw. That's perfect. I'm plenty happy with that. I'll use some sort of a countersink screw into the rails. So the cross sections over there where the track will sit on top of, it's it's 50 feet. So I need 100 feet of six by six to make up the two rails. And the posts are every six feet spacing. So these four foot rails, as long as I overlap these rails on the cracks in those uh, long wooden rail sections, it should be all right. So guide rail on one side and then just a flat strap on the opposite side. So hopefully tonight I'll get this thing hoisted up on top of these six by sixes. And then the next order of business is to lift the carriage out of the grass because it's the early summer, the grass has come up all through it. So I'm gonna lift it up, put tin under it, put better rails, and then maybe give it yet another coat of oil. Current state of the carriage, as you can see, very well oiled. Very well oiled, everything's still slip and slides. Um, what is it, four axles, I believe. So I need to come in through here, right by the Ferrano logo, and go and lift the whole thing and then correct these logs so it's more level and put tin so none of this grass nonsense comes up and starts rotting my wood playing with it. So it's been, what has it been, two years, I think. You can also see the extended shaft sitting in the grass there. And that's the, um, the cable, the cable drum, which is wood. It's missing and there's a big chunk out of that. That's always been that way. So we've got to make one of those and then set up the chain drive, of course. There's the 1020 sleeping over there and there's the edging saw. So as for this, everything works all right. Still works fine. But progress is being made. The other thing, these brackets, I made 50 of these or had them made, modeled them up on uh, SolidWorks 
and there are three offset slots on each side meant for three eighths or half inch lag bolts. And these will go under all of these members and they allow it that you can just put the bolts in their slack and then lift certain pieces to level or to tweak them. So uh, I made 50 of those, might, might need more, but anyway, it'll do for now. So I'll show you some of the other action of what's going on here. Here's looking from the board end all the way down to the log end. It's a 50 foot section, 50 foot system. You see everything, there are some ups and downs, but all the crossers have been leveled with regards to the posts so that when the rails come in, I can shim those a little bit and it should be good. So these are hydro pole, old hydro pole sections sunk four feet, a little bit more into the ground and cut to three feet above. These are the brackets that I made in action. This one's pretty lightly, just with three lag bolts, three three eighths lag bolts. And this is all six inch, six inch, six inch ash. When we approach the husk, you can see the pulley, which will be the power pulley now, I have the ability and will in the future add the extended shaft and that's the big flange for it. Bearings, step pulley for three um, advance rates, different advance rates. And I reckon that pulley there is what went down with a half twist to uh, power the sawdust conveyor. That's probably what I'll use. Going around the splitter. I just have the blade mocked up on there for fun with the guides that are pinching by the teeth, which means the blade that was on here was larger. So those have to be, has to be adjusted, of course. This is what the husk is sitting on. So the husk is 10 inch tall rails by four. And there are a few holes that can accept threaded rods. So those will sit on one, two, three, will sit on top of one, two, three, ash six by sixes and it'll be offset a little bit so that this face and this face are flush all of these pockets are to accept you can see them from here yeah those bolts that go all the way through that section so those should if everything was measured all right nest in these once i lift that and set it on it and then i'll be able to adjust it you can see it's off kilter it's away right now so that's looking down to the far end. Some of the bells and whistles, the controls, uh, plate, name plate, the roller for the, what they call the board bandit, and some of the mechanism. Stay tuned for more as progress is being made by the day. Have a good one.